Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, Research Infrastructures and Genomics, How Cutter Precision Medicine Institute Cutter Genome Program is building the next generation of infrastructures to test the value of predictive genomics. I am Marie Stone of LabRoots, and I'll be your moderator for today's event. Today's educational web seminar is presented by LabRoots and brought to you by Thermo Fisher Scientific. We encourage you to participate today by submitting any questions you may have during the presentation. To do so, simply type them into the Ask a Question box and click Send. We'll answer as many questions as we have time for at the end of the presentation. You may also submit any technical issues here as well if you have trouble seeing or hearing the presentation. I'd like to now welcome our speaker, Raja Masai Baji, Operations Manager, Cutter Genome Program, Cutter Foundation, Cutter. Raja, you may now begin your presentation. Hello, everybody. Thank you for the introduction. And I am happy today to present to you Qatar Genome Program from the, its inception to what we, where we are today. Basically, Qatar Genome started with a, a strategy and a vision at a very high level of leadership in Qatar in 2013. The first genome was sequen sequenced in 2015, and today, in 2025, we are hoping to reach the population scale genetic tes testing, whether using whole genome sequencing or genotyping technologies. Qatar Genome, at its first stage, was incubated in Qatar Biobank. So Qatar Biobank, it's a national program to study uh, the environmental or genetic contribution uh, of, of disease burden in Qatar. So the Qatar genome started with sequencing the Qatar Biobank cohort. And the advantage of Qatar Biobank cohort is that it's linked and integrated to a rich phenotypic data that is collected during the three hours visit in Qatar Biobank, ranging from 66 blood markers to full MRI body scan a spirometry, exercise test, a height and weight, a blood pressure, etc. Also, the Qatar Biobank is integrated with the electronic medical record. So we receive, on a regular basis, updates from the electronic medical records of the participants so we can follow up their health status. So, so far, we have sequenced 28,000 of Qatari citizens and 4,000 of Arab uh, um, samples. So what, we, what is unique about Qatar genome program is its location. So Qatar is uh, an underrepresented population in the genetic studies. So it's a small country in the Middle East. Uh, there is a high number of uh, expatriate uh, community, especially from uh, South Asia and Arab uh, countries. And Qatar has amongst the highest uh, consanguinity rate in the world, the second actually, would make it very interesting for genetic studies. What is also unique about Qatar Genome Program is the, the centralized healthcare system, which allows us to integrate the electronic medical record throughout the country with Qatar Biobank and Qatar Genome data. Also, the program doesn't focus on genomic data only, but for, uh, that has a multi omics approach. So a number of our samples has transcriptomics data, proteomics, metabolomics, epigenomics, and microbiomics, making the research utility of the data higher and higher for more, uh, uh, for more studies. We, uh, we have also in Qatar state-of-the-art infrastructure that is offered to the research community for free in order to mine the data. So although we are working in Qatar, actually we are exposed to a big number of countries just because of the uniqueness of the Qatari population. So there is a big, uh, a big expat community from Arab countries that is actually representing over 400 to 500 million people, uh, what we, we call the Arab world. These populations are among the ancient populations 
they are all within the Qatar expat community and they are largely underrepresented in the literature. So we are really feeling a gap here um, in terms of international genetic research. In, in, in the Qatar Genome Program, we are focusing on the whole spectrum of genetic disease, from monogenic or single gene disorders because of a high consanguinity rate in the population, also to a polygenic disorders because of the high prevalence of common disease like diabetes and cardiovascular. So we are hoping to build a platform for discovery for the full spectrum of genetic diseases. Qatar Genome Program has been recognized as one of the programs that will expand the diversity in genomics. And as you can see on the screen, this is a nature paper listing the Qatar Genome among the most important programs in the world, expanding the diversity. The Qatar Genome Program um, national strategy is based on seven building blocks. First of all is the national biobanking. So when they started the genome, they incubated the Qatar genome in Qatar Biobank because it was well established with a big number of samples. The community uh, knows very well the project that it was easy uh, to expose uh, the community to the genetic research. Uh, among uh, this capability, we have built a big genomics infrastructure with our partners, and we also hired uh, a, a big human capacity from bioinformaticians, genetic counselor, geneticists, in order to mine the data. Bear in mind that Qatar uh, is, a, is a, I, I would say, a young country, and everything was ha has to be built from scratch. For that, we had to prepare also all the regulatory environments uh, to make this research possible by building or offering policies and regulations for genomic research. Uh, we have also gathered many researchers from the country and from abroad to mine the data and to uh, investigate key questions uh, in terms of genetic. Of course, now we are moving towards clinical implementation, and I will show you today some early results of the program that show the utility of the clinical implementation of the findings. Of course, uh, all of this in the hope of building a big data hub where all the data is integrated uh, in a way that makes the discovery meaningful <coughs> and possible. Sorry. So in terms of policies and regulation, it was very important uh, to build um, uh, <coughs> the, ethical, um, the ethical environment of uh, genomic research, knowing that Qatar uh, has an Islamic background, uh, a, a, a group of Islamic scholars has to work together to make the debate, to, to make a public debate about genetic research in the country. And these are examples of the documents that can be found um, in the public domain um, that regulate the genomic research in the country. Education was also a very important component of the program, but we really want to uh, focus on the postgraduate or the health professional uh, education. We started uh, to educate uh, very young kids because we know these are the future generation and this is really to, uh, to prepare the future generation uh, to embrace uh, genetics because we believe that this will be the common in the coming years. <clears throat> so we have programs, early school years, where we have a comic series that you can see on the screen uh, for kids to, uh, to explain uh, in a lucrative and in a, uh, in a simple way some key genomic or genetic concepts. And we also have a DNA museum where uh, uh, small children can have a tour uh, and we can, we, we can raise their uh, curiosity around genetics. <clears throat> we have also middle and high school programs where uh, the national education program has been changed to include uh, some key concepts of genomics. I say genomics, not genetics. So it's really to prepare uh, the young students for future science careers. And of course, we have, uh, in partnership with local universities, 
graduate and postgraduate programs uh, around genetic counseling and precision medicine. We also, we also offer internship programs and scholarships uh, for master degrees and, PhD, uh, and uh, PhD programs. So, so we are doing this in the hope of, um, of fostering uh, the genomic research in the country by building an ecosystem uh, that allow uh, the researchers and also the, uh, the public to, uh, to have a, an honest and transparent debate about genetics. Uh, the genomic research, uh, of course, needs the data, and this is what we, we are collecting and what we are doing in the program, but also need a big infrastructure uh, to mine the data. And uh, we have built uh, a big data center uh, that, that is offered for free uh, for the researchers to mine the data. As like I said, we are uh, enrolling uh, students in master and PhD program through our uh, local university partners. Uh, and they are also offered uh, to uh, analyze the data. We have also uh, funding uh, schemas uh, to fund uh, research um, uh, on genetics and on personalized med medicine. Uh, this uh, funding schema is called Path Towards Personalized Medicine. Uh, this happens uh, on a yearly basis. And recently also we have created a, a data federation sharing model where we offer uh, uh, genetic sequencing or uh, genotyping to researchers that they want to collaborate with our program, but they have to establish uh, a broad consent uh, to recruit participants that allow the future use of the research uh, of the data for uh, future research programs. And uh, we, uh, we are partner uh, with the researchers to uh, establish a data governance uh, program that respects the consent of the, of course, of the research subjects, but also uh, that can offer the data for uh, future research purposes. So now I'm gonna uh, uh, I'm gonna show you some early results of the program, which show clearly uh, why uh, it is important to establish uh, these national programs. So first, we have uh, we have studied uh, around um, uh, 45 uh, cl clinically relevant traits, basically uh, blood biomarkers and the height and the BMI. And actually, we uh, we have found millions of novel variants that are not previously reported uh, in the literatures with thousands of novel signals. So this show clearly uh, the importance of such studies to establish uh, to establish polygenic risk scores that are specific to our population. And in this paper, uh, uh, Dr. Omar Elba, who is the lead PI, and Dr. Karsten show clearly that uh, the polygenic risk scores that are calculated in um, uh, in European descendant uh, um, um, population doesn't work well with our population, and it is clearly needed uh, to have more studies, uh, uh, more GWAS studies on our population. Here also, I, uh, you can see um, a paper uh, from one of the lead PI of our research consortium. Um, his name is Yunus Mikrab. Dr. Yunus Mikrab and his team have showed that uh, the QGP data has a particular data uh, a structure that is not found in other population. And you can see uh, here in, in very simple terms, the colors are quite different from, uh, from the other population showing that uh, it's clear that the, the Qatari population has a unique structure that was not seen in, uh, uh, in the previous studies. So are, we are really feeling a gap here. Regarding the SCMG, uh, SCMG genes, uh, we have also studied the prevalence of uh, um, disease uh, or, or for risk um, mutations in the SCMG genes that are really interesting in terms of return of genetic results uh, to, the, to the, uh, our uh, research participants. So basically, 2.3% of the QGP sequence participants are carrier of a pathogenic or likely pathogenic variants in one of the 59 SCMG genes. 
And we have also identified 60 pathogenic and likely pathogenic variants in 25 SMG genes that are uh, uh, specific to, to our population. So this paper shows clearly uh, uh, that uh, it's really important to establish uh, models of returning uh, interesting results to the participants, uh, which can um, contribute to the prevent to preventative medicine, implementation of preventative medicine in Qatar. So another, uh, another very interesting paper from uh, the Qatar Genome Research Consortium is the, is the cancer uh, risk landscape uh, in the QGP dataset. And the early results shows that 3.17% uh, of Qatar genome data set is a carrier of a rare cancer risk variant. And, uh, and also again here, uh, uh, this emphasizes the importance of uh, these uh, type of studies, but also the importance of um, establishing models of returning uh, results. Another paper from the research uh, uh, consortium uh, about pharmacogenomics landscape shows that uh, the Qatari population um, is carrier of 3.6 in average. Every Qatari is a carrier of 3.6 actionable genotype or diplotype uh, mutation affecting 13 drugs with guidelines and 99.5%, almost everybody is at least a carrier of one clinically actionable genotype in terms of pharmacogenomic. For simvastatin, for example, which is highly used, it's one of the mostly used uh, drugs in the country because of the high cholesterol level, um, uh, the, uh, the risk of carrying uh, um, a variant uh, that increases the risk of myopathy is, uh, um, is more than 32%. So, so basically, here you can see that our, uh, our program on our research cons consortium is clearly feeling a big gap um, in terms of Middle Eastern uh, genomics. And here we uh, also have more papers uh, uh, in the pipeline, uh, studying the loss of function variants, the Mendelian diseases, uh, the HLA, the KIR and RBC genotypes, and the herbs and exo uh, exogenous uh, infectious disease, uh, agents uh, in the genome. So we hope that uh, these papers will be published very, very soon and, and will contribute more uh, um, to establish Clear, a clear strategy for uh, um, precision medicine implementation. Also, uh, so we were hit by COVID like everybody else, and we were able, because of the availability of the data, we were able to also to participate as Qatar Genome uh, to the to the big international consortium, the the host genome initiative. And actually, uh, Qatar uh, was the only member from outside Europe, USA, and the Far East, uh, in addition to Brazil. Uh, 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 so Qatar contributed with its data to understand the contribution of the host genome in, uh, into the severity of the COVID-19. So now, uh, with these interesting findings, the leadership have understood that there is a clear in, uh, interest in moving from population genomics to more clinical implementation. So it's normal that we, we went through a, a big uh, phase for establishing the platform and the infrastructure, uh, uh, educating uh, the community about the importance of genetic in order to enroll them in this genetic uh, uh, program and then to uh, provide researchers with time to mine the data and to understand how, how different or um, what is the potential of this data in terms of genetic. Now, because it is clearly found uh, that, uh, this, uh, that the, the population will benefit directly from uh, this genetic testing, uh, we are moving towards clinical implementation. So uh, uh, for that, we are establishing the Qatar Precision Medicine Institute. So we are, we, we are still, uh, we will be uh, um, again, uh, 
we will be named Qatar Genome, but we are now clearly merging with Qatar Biobank to become Qatar Precision Medicine Institute. And now the focus will be more on disease cohorts. So it is really to increase the, the, the clinical utility of the cohort and to focus on a specific prevalent diseases in the country. But also we want to see models of integration of genetic into healthcare. The focal point for precision, med uh, precision medicine related activities is to continue to use the biobank facility, but to offer the facility for the national level uh, um, is to bank all the samples that are related uh, to uh, disease or population cohorts, uh, to build a big, uh, a big capacity in terms of bioinformatics and clinical bioinformatics, to standardize the operations and to get uh, the accreditations, to, to have uh, a national uh, data management and governance um, a strategy to make the data sharing and the data federation uh, possible uh, uh, for the uh, uh, on, in the whole country, and but also uh, is really to establish what we call the clinical genomes. Uh, this is all related to the accreditations and to the to the regulation, and we know that it's not always easy uh, uh, to um, to marry research and clinical implementation. Of course, uh, we need to uh, focus on education, now education of healthcare professionals to, uh, uh, to introduce, uh, uh, introduce them to the notion of precision medicine and use of genetic, because this can be disruptive to their clinical activity. So big education activity is needed there. And also we are hoping that uh, precision medicine uh, can create an, uh, an innovation ecosystem in the country and see some startup companies uh, um, uh, raising here in, in, in the country around uh, this, uh, this thematic. Uh, so the approach we, we have taken is to start with pilots. So we are uh, identifying low hanging fruits uh, to show the utility of uh, clinical implementation. And we have used the early results of the project uh, to show uh, uh, quickly impact and uh, this is uh, really to gain uh, the, the trust of the clinicians and the commu community and the leadership to continue uh, on a wider uh, level um, uh, afterwards. So the first pilot we are, uh, we are starting at Qatar Biobank. So we, uh, uh, we will preemptively genotype uh, uh, Qatar Biobank uh, uh, participants and provide them uh, with uh, uh, statin um, uh, related my, uh, statin myopathy related risk. So basically, uh, if a, a biobank participants come uh, uh, to the to the biobank and he is a statin statin native, but his uh, uh, blood pressure or his cholesterol level uh, um, uh, has a, he has a recommendation to take a statin, he will be referred uh, to Hamad Medical Corporation, which is the healthcare provider here in the country. He will be prescribed with statin, but with uh, this uh, referral, uh, the healthcare provider will receive a pharmacogenomic report uh, um, that will show if the participant uh, has the risk variant or no, and what are the recommendations. Of course, these healthcare, healthcare providers are educated uh, to act upon this data, and uh, we want to see what would be the clinical utility and the clinical validity of such approach. The second pilot is about the clopidogrel. And now, because clopidogrel uh, needs um, a quick uh, a quick action, we are investigation, uh, investigating the adoption of rapid point of care reactive testing to guide clopidogrel therapy. So what we'll, uh, we will install uh, uh, point of care uh, uh, genotyping uh, devices uh, in few clinics and we will uh, try to establish pipelines uh, to guide uh, um, the clopidogrel prescriptions based on genetic data. The next uh, pilot is about uh, breast cancer chemotherapy. And, and, and actually uh, we were approached by clinicians because there is high uh, variability of outcomes reported amongst patients treated with the same. 
<coughs> chemotherapy, chemotherapy uh, regimens. And here, the, the objective is really to study uh, what, is, what are the reason, reasons of uh, this variability and what is the contribution of genetics uh, there. So it's not always about clinical implementation and sometimes we need to focus on specific questions and make a discovery that may be proper to this population. In terms of uh, disease uh, risk, we, are, uh, uh, we started a pilot for returning uh, carrier uh, results of BRCA1 and BRCA2 in collaboration with, again, Hamad Medical Corporation, which is the healthcare provider here. And basically, we are using the genetic data coming from research pipeline. And anyone who is carrier is consented to receive uh, uh, genetic uh, feedback. If the, the participants consents, uh, consents, they will be uh, uh, for, um, referred to Hamad Medical Corporation for confirmatory testing, for uh, further assessments of family history. And then if they are uh, positive, they will be enrolled uh, in the um, breast cancer screening program. So basically here, the, 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 the objective is really uh, to screen a big uh, uh, a big, uh, uh, big number of the population for BRCA1 and BRCA2 uh, screening and, um, and, all, all, and detect uh, the high-risk individuals and then enroll them in, in the breast, uh, breast cancer screening national program. Now with the, uh, the primary health care, we have also uh, pilots uh, um, on returning uh, genomic reports for uh, for wellness and lifestyle. So basically, the primary health care center has a, a program called the Wellness Program. These are programs that uh, um, that aim to uh, to uh, follow uh, some uh, patients that uh, are uh, obese or uh, um, pre-diabetic uh, to change their lifestyle. Uh, to put them uh, in a, a special diet uh, regimen and exercise in the hope of uh, of reverting back uh, the their their status of obesity or diabetes now what we want to investigate is the is if uh, if these participants receive um, genomic report about their risk of being obese of or uh, developing uh, diabetes would that genetic uh, information increase their motivation uh, to uh, follow a healthy lifestyle? And the second project is, um, is to uh, investigate the willingness of uh, primary healthcare uh, patients to enroll uh, in genetic studies. And this is the PHTC Smart Health Check. So the PHTC Smart Health Check program is a big, uh, a big national program uh, uh, for screening for common diseases. And actually, now we have uh, um, we have in a uh, we are in a pilot study to include uh, genetics as well. So these participants will be offered to consent uh, for genetic testing to contribute for research, and then uh, uh, we are also establishing models for returning uh, interest in genetic. Uh, uh, findings to these participants. So now I would like to uh, here uh, to show you the contribution of Thermo Fisher technology to our project. So uh, basically a cutter genome program is based on whole genome sequencing. And the reason for that is that, uh, as I showed previously, this is an underrepresented population, and we, we didn't know the frequency of, uh, uh, of the variants, what is the landscape of uh, genetic diseases and common diseases in the country. Now that we sequenced 20, 80,000 whole genome, and we have, and we have early results, we, we have a better understanding of the prevalence of uh, um, uh, disease or pathogenic, pathogenic variants uh, in the country and the most important variants to be used in uh, disease uh, risk prediction. And all these variants have been uh, put in, uh, in an array, which is in its, its second version now, called the Q-chip. So the uh, Q-chip is a Qatar-specific SNP microarray that is uh, mainly used for the genetic testing on known variants that affect health. 
So it provides information about the carrier status of known gene variants in heritable conditions, uh, uh, like uh, breast cancer, for example. It also has a pharmacogenomic modules uh, uh, for the uh, variants uh, that that will uh, uh, will require alternative drug dosing or alternative an alternative uh, uh, drug, and uh, it has uh, also uh, more information that are specific to the Qatari population. So we have almost 2080, uh, 28,000 Qatari specific variants that are predicted to be pathogenic and that are unique to our population. This array is CAP accredited, and um, this is a big advantage uh, for clinical implementation. Following the Q-chip, we have worked also on what we call the Pan-Arab Array. The Pan-Arab Array is a whole now genome genotyping array. So the Q-chip is more about rare variants, whereas the Pan-Arab Array is uh, more about common variants. And uh, the, the Pan-Arab Array, um, uh, actually was um, uh, was design uh, is under design sorry is under design with Thermo Fisher uh, and we are using for that an Arab reference panel of more than 2,400 uh, uh, Arab uh, genomes coming from 19 countries and uh, what we are hoping here is to offer this pan Arab array, array which which we which is which is considered as a cost effective tool for whole genome sequencing to the Arab uh, world and make the the genomic prof genetic profiling of a large number of Arabs possible and if we combine this this genetic data with their medical records or their uh, or some kind of clinical information we think that we will empower the region uh, with uh, with an important precision medicine tool uh, for discovery of this uh, uh, for discovery and establishment of disease uh, prediction models that are specific to this understudied population so what we we now what we see the Q-chip plus the Pan-Arab array as a real, uh, an army Swiss uh, knife, uh, and Swiss, uh, sorry, Swiss army knife that can be uh, uh, used as a precision medicine discovery and application platform. So with one test that is done once in life, uh, we can uh, do uh, a carrier screening, we can do diagnosis, we can do disease risk prediction, we can offer uh, a platform for genomic profiling of a large number of population. We can offer also pharmacogenomic implementation. We can uh, foster uh, uh, research and we can, uh, of course, uh, create and then apply polygenic risk scores. So this is really a big opportunity for the uh, Arab, Arab world uh, that was made possible uh, by uh, Qatar Genome Program. So following this work, it was very important for us to understand uh, the acceptability or the willingness of the population to continue or to contribute to, contribute to, the, to the genome program, especially that we are going now to the population phase. And uh, we have uh, established two surveys, one with the public, one with the healthcare professional. And uh, the good news is that we have the support of both. So here I will I will show you uh, the results of um, of the uh, these the, the key results of these surveys. So basically, with the general population, eighty percent either uh, strongly agree or agree that um, they want to know about about their genetic makeup, and this can be also uh, sensed from uh, the consenting level. Uh, of people here for genomic research, but also for the returning, for the res uh, for receiving uh, genetic results from uh, their research data. Uh, also, uh, people here they are willing to participate. Uh, they they want to contribute uh, to genomic programs, and uh, um, they think that the, uh, the they want to see how QGP is relevant to their to their uh, life and how it can help them. So basically here the participants, they want to see something in return. Uh, so it's, uh, um, and that's why it was very important for us 
to establish these models of returning genomic results because it's clearly that this is what people are looking for. Also, uh, professional uh, health professional support QGP plans. So basically, almost 97% uh, is either uh, they uh, agree or uh, uh, slightly or uh, agree uh, strongly uh, that the national genome programs will help implement precision medicine and it will improve healthcare. And uh, also health professional, they are willing to invest time in training. Uh, which, which is, uh, again, uh, what we can see also in our program. Whenever we offer uh, educational program, we have uh, a big uh, a number of, uh, uh, of applications. Uh, so people that are really interested to understand more. So what I hope here that I gave you an overview of what we are doing and where we are going uh, to. And, and, and I would like to thank uh, all the people that are behind uh, this work. So the QGP, the Qatar Genome Program team, but also Qatar Biobank, uh, which is a pillar in this program, uh, Qatar Foundation, uh, Sidra Hospital and Hamad Medical Corporation, Qatar University and Hamad uh, bin Khalifa University, and the Qatar National uh, uh, Research Funding, uh, uh, Funding Program here. So thank you again. And here I can show you, uh, I'm showing you two pictures of Qatar, uh, like in 1960 and Qatar today. And you can see that this country is booming. Uh, we are doing everything uh, from scratch, but uh, it's the speed of, uh, of how things are happening here uh, is, uh, uh, is amazing. Thank you all. And um, I'm happy to have your, to answer your questions. Thank you, Raja, for your informative presentation. We will now start the live Q&A portion of the webinar. If you have a question you'd like to ask, please do so now. Just click on the Ask a Question box located on the far left of your screen. We'll answer as many of your questions as we have time for. So let's get started. Our first question is, Qatar Genome is an integral part of an ecosystem of life science and medical research infrastructures working in symbiosis. Please talk about the challenges you faced to create such an environment. What are the lessons learned that you think could help researchers in other countries achieve similar collaborations? Thank you. That's a very uh, good question. So uh, the challenges that we have faced, as I said during my presentation, is really have to build everything from scratch. Is really to build uh, the expertise, uh, to build the infrastructure, uh, the strategy, uh, the regulation, all at the same time. So it was really a lot to do. And um, the thing that helped us a lot is to uh, really have connection at a very early stage with key national programs in other countries. This is uh, really what allowed us uh, to learn from others and uh, to avoid uh, the mistakes maybe that uh, were unfortunately uh, faced uh, uh, with other uh, genome programs. And now I think what was a very important lesson learned is that it's very important to have a very high level leadership support. So politicians are very important uh, in national programs. And uh, you can see that in uh, other countries as well. We always uh, uh, connect uh, a genome program to a political figure. And I think this is very important uh, because we need uh, the support of different ministries. Uh, um, a genome program is interlinked with, uh, with different, uh, uh, different stakeholders. Uh, uh, so without the leadership support, it's very hard to cascade the decisions or the strategies to operational level. And also what is important, I think, is uh, really to, when it's our, in our case, we, we are uh, relying on a network of stakeholders. It's very important to involve us, uh, involve them from the beginning, uh, even at uh, the strategy uh, establishment level. Uh, but also uh, it's very important to give credit to everybody. So Qatar, the thank you slides, uh, slide that you've seen at the end, 
is very important. Qatar Genome Program is about a big network, and we we, we really want to thank everybody because without them, uh, all of this uh, wouldn't have been possible. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question is, let's talk about the Qatari Array, the famous Q-chip, which is helping to drive much of the research you showed us today. We know it is even being exposed in the Qatar National Museum. Why did you choose microarray technology over WGS and LPS? What are the advantages you have experienced in the lab? Okay, so now for us, we didn't really choose uh, the genotyping over the whole genome sequencing. It's really, we see that as a, a, a complementary technology. It was very important for us to do whole genome sequencing as a discovery platform, because as I said, this is an underrepresented population. Now the, the genotyping technology came after because we thought that uh, now we know enough about uh, the genetic uh, landscape uh, of the country, and we were able to identify key variants that can be uh, put on the array. Now, what is very interesting about the array is the scalability and the cost effectiveness. When it comes to, uh, uh, to scalability, I think the arrays are, 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 is the best tool because if you can do 100 in whole genome, you can do 1,000 in, 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 in arrays. Uh, so cost scalability, cost effectiveness, uh, but also the downstream complexity of the analysis. So it's way easier to get uh, accreditation uh, um, when we use arrays. Uh, establishing standardized pipelines was way easier for us uh, using array data compared to whole genome data. So it's, it really depends on what we, we want to do. So for some of, for some of our projects, we are still uh, using whole genome sequencing, but for uh, clinical implementation, we are more shifting towards uh, genotyping technologies. Okay, thank you. Next question, what were the factors that led you to choose Thermo Fisher Scientific as a partner for the QGP? Uh, we have experience with uh, uh, with Illumina technology and Thermo Fisher, but uh, we have ch chosen Thermo Fisher because of the quality of the data. So we we were able to see that Thermo Fisher is a platform that uh, provide um, high quality uh, data. So um, we were happy with that, uh, and but also we were happy with the relationship with Thermo Fisher. So it, it, it went beyond just the commercial relationship. We have established um, an R&D um, relationship. So they were really helping in this uh, journey of uh, discovery, um, um, designing probes that are uh, specific to capture some rare variants in our population. So this is really what um, made it a natural choice for us is uh, is because we know uh, we know the technology, uh, we know the quality of the data, but also the specific relationship that we have uh, with the with the design team. All right, great, thank you. And it looks like we have time for one more question. The Pan Arab Array promises to bring innovation in genomics to the whole Arab community. What are your expectations for this project? So our expectation uh, of, uh, is really to build large Arab consortia, is to make this array a platform that will allow uh, countries that probably cannot afford whole genome sequencing, big genomic platform, to profile a big number of population, uh, but also to build a network in the Arab countries uh, and to integrate this data and uh, to build a network of expertise to mine such data and to build uh, really precision medicine tools that are specific to, the, to this population. So we really hope that we, are uh, that we will use this tool uh, to make connections and to make big projects uh, possible. Great. Well, thank you, Raja. For, do you have any final comments for our audience? 
Um, I just want to thank you uh, for the the invitation and um, and thank you for the questions that are uh, very relevant and I'm happy to answer any question that may come uh, afterwards. Thank you. Well, thank you again, Raja, for your time today and your presentation. Thank you. So, mm -hmm. We would also like to thank LabRoots and our sponsor, Thermo Fisher Scientific, for underwriting today's educational webcast. Before we go, I'd like to thank the audience for joining us today and for their interesting questions. Questions we did not have time for today and those submitted during the on-demand period will be addressed by the speaker via the contact information you provided at the time of registration. This webcast can be viewed on demand. LabRoots will alert you via email when it's available for replay. We encourage you to share that email with your colleagues who may have missed today's live event. Until next time, goodbye. Thank you, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.